Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and if you've come along Alibaba along your investing journey, you may have learned that Alibaba tends to evoke strong emotions in the investing community as it's gotten into some hot water over the last few years due to a few controversial situations, including how the Chinese government doesn't want big tech companies in China to become monopolistic. So there's been a push on the regulatory side to kind of make some Chinese behemoths smaller and more competitive with others so that maybe there will be more prosperity for everybody in China. So with that in mind, there's been some breaking news toward the end of March 2023 that Alibaba would split into six different companies. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in addition to some of its financial performance lately, as well as how Charlie Munger, the former chairman of Daily Journal Corporation, did not sell Alibaba, as far as we can tell, in the latest quarter ending the March 2023. This was the first quarter, and this is based on the 13F filing that got updated on Dataroma as of April 4. So that's kind of surprising because during the mid-February Daily Journal meeting, Charlie Munger said how Alibaba was one of his biggest mistakes, and I'll tell you more about that too. So with all that in mind, even though you may be on different sides of the Alibaba debate, if you enjoy studying businesses and figuring out what kinds of stocks might be interesting investments or not, please be sure to like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because investing is such an amazing learning experience and whether you invest or not is not the point. It's all about the journey and trying to become the best investors we can be. So with that, let's get into what's going on with Baba lately. As soon as the news came out on March 28th, Alibaba's stock immediately jumped from being in the 80 something dollar per share range to over a hundred dollar per share range. And that was kind of a big deal because it must have meant that the stock market is taking this as good news. Although I've discussed this situation with some of my investing friends and they're a little bit split on the matter where some believe that maybe this is just a ploy to pump up the stock price and it's not necessarily unlocking shareholder value unlike like what the CFO Toby Shu might have claimed and also to foster market competitiveness. But another one of my friends believes that it will actually help the divisions of BABA where maybe it will make them more competitive in certain regions and allow them to get better support and access to capital markets. So depending on where you fall on that debate, this might lead you to believe that this is either a good or bad thing for Alibaba to pursue, but either way, their stock has been languishing over the last few years, ever since Jack Ma's controversial speech in October 2020 that shuttled the Ant IPO and wipe out around $600 billion in market cap value. So based on some of that, it's no wonder that the management was probably needing to come up with something new and different than whatever they'd been trying to do over the last couple of years. And also we have reason to believe that Jack Ma was actually crucial in moving the needle toward getting Alibaba to split according to the Wall Street Journal. And it's no surprise that China has welcomed back Jack Ma onto the mainland and he attended a school in Hangzhou where Alibaba is headquartered. So with Jack Ma coming back into the picture, it looks like he's tied to the decision for Alibaba to split into six different companies. And some of the news reporting on this was a little bit confusing because they said that Baba would split into six different business groups or units. And Toby Shu, the CFO, said that it would they would be independent companies. So I'm assuming they will mostly be independent companies, except for the Taobao Tmall e-commerce group, which will remain a wholly owned subsidiary of Alibaba, which will become a holding company. So Everything else other than the domestic e-commerce will seem to be splitting out into their own companies. And then the management also said that these different new business companies will be able to decide when they want to go for an IPO and they do things on their own time, but they will have their own CEOs and also own board of directors. And until they figure some of this stuff out, they will still have 
the main Alibaba board of directors that they report into until they finalize and smooth out all the transition as part of this reorganization. So it's kind of like so much for being a company that will last for 102 years because they're already cutting off a bunch of tentacles that make this octopus so strong because once upon a time, this was Jack Ma's whole business model where he wanted to make an Alibaba economy and achieve economies of scale by having all these different business tentacles but by trying to cut them off i guess they're trying to make them into little baby octopuses and get them into the world and thrive hopefully on their own if they're strong enough but in my opinion i think that some of these will maybe end up being stronger than others and as we can see daniel zhang the current alibaba ceo will remain the ceo of the cloud intelligence group so my money would be on that one because we know that e-commerce tends to struggle and if amazon is any sign we know that amazon's e-commerce business has pretty low margins whereas the cloud business like aws tends to have high double digit margins like upwards of 30 percent so if i were to invest in any alibaba stocks in the future i would think that it might be an interesting bet on the alibaba cloud business as that seems to be the breadwinner out of the bunch and maybe subsequently, maybe e-commerce still has a fighting chance and there's even more, including how there's the local services group, which is the food delivery service, LME basically. There's the logistics business, the global or international commerce business and the digital media and entertainment group. So depending on those and how much each of these might get saddled with long-term debt, you might want to research these groups individually to figure out which ones you think could be winners in the future, depending on how the global and domestic economies are evolving. So definitely keep some of that in mind as things might change in the near future for BABA. And even though Alibaba is massively restructuring its company and governance model, the listing status of its shares on the New York and Hong Kong exchanges will remain as they are. And that means BABA in the New York Stock Exchange and the Hong Kong 9988 shares will be unaffected by these changes. So that is reported by the Wall Street Journal if you happen to be invested in any versions of those shares. And also based on some of their financial performance lately, things have been continuously kind of going downhill from my perspective. And that just seems to be improving, however, from the COVID lockdowns and other issues going on in the Chinese economy, where their revenue growth rate was only 2% year on year in their total revenues. And their cloud business year over year revenues have been steadily declining from being at 12% in the first quarter of 2022 down to 10%, down to 4%, and finally down to 3% in the fourth quarter of 2022. And that's based on a calendar look, not the fiscal quarter. So based on some of that, it hasn't been looking too hot for Alibaba. Although finally, Alibaba Cloud has become profitable over the last several quarters where they seem to have hit an over 77 and a half billion renminbi mark which means that it seems that in the net income that's becoming pretty profitable for them or if you look at their adjusted ebitda so overall things with cloud are improving but overall i think alibaba's financial performance is not completely out of the woods but the alibaba management has recognized that their stock is insanely cheap so They've been faithfully buying back shares over the last several quarters where they had increased their stock repurchase program from being $10 billion in 2020 to $40 billion total in November 2022. And so far, they've bought back $21.3 billion worth of shares and the remainder is $18.7 billion. And we can see this play out over the last few quarters where they've bought back anywhere between two to three and a half billion dollars worth of shares in the each of the last three quarters. So I think that that's progress in the management recognizing that Alibaba is too cheap, even around the hundred dollar per share mark. So hopefully with them 
restructuring. They'll figure out a way forward for Alibaba to be able to go back onto a sustainable growth path. And then eventually investors might have faith reinstilled and then perhaps buy back into Alibaba based on how it looks like the Chinese government is done with its heavy regulatory fines and changes that they want. And maybe this will finally give some breathing room for Alibaba and other Chinese big tech like Tencent to get back onto the horse and get some earnings as they probably are starved for doing that lately. So I think that hopefully they're going in the right direction overall. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, one of my favorite investors and one of the best investors of all time, Charlie Munger admitted at this year's Daily Journal meeting that Alibaba ended up being one of his biggest mistakes. And it's a little bit of a head scratcher why, because you would have thought he was one of Baba's biggest cheerleaders over the last few years. And it makes me wonder if Monish Pabrai got to him to make him have a change of heart. And then he realized maybe the grave error that he may have made. And yet, in spite of that, Daily Journal continues to own Baba shares. So it's also surprising that even though this is such a big mistake, why are they holding on to the Baba shares? Do they feel like it's just a sunk cost and they might as well ride it out until they regain the value that they plopped into this business and then maybe eventually get out when they've broken even? Or do they think that Baba has a fighting chance of being a decent company in the future in spite of Charlie making this mistake that he thinks it's so grave? So. Based on that, I'll read to you what Charlie said at the Daily Journal about this mistake. And you let me know in the comments what you think about Charlie's words on Baba, because like I've also talked about before, Charlie owns Costco and he regards that as one of the best companies ever. And that's also a retail business. So think about that when you compare that with Alibaba also in the following where he said, I regard Alibaba as one of the worst mistakes I ever made. In thinking about Alibaba, I got charmed with the idea of their position on the Chinese internet. I didn't stop to realize they're still a retailer. It's going to be a competitive business, the internet. It's not going to be a cakewalk for everybody. And the idea that I destroyed that it wasn't a good idea. It was a bad idea. When the internet came in, I got over charmed by the people who are leading in the online retailing and I didn't realize it's still retailing. It may be online retailing, but it's also still retailing. And I got a little out of focus and that let me overestimate the future returns from Alibaba. And so I've never made the same mistake twice, essentially is what he said. So based on some of that, I think we'll have to see what happens in the coming quarters or years, depending on what Daily Journal might decide to do. Because although Charlie stepped down from being its chairman, he still might have some involvement with its equity portfolio. So who knows what will happen. But unlike Charlie, it seems that Michael Burry is invested in Baba for now. And so are some other investors still in it, like Bill Miller and Guy Spears. So we'll have to also see what some of those super investors decide with Baba in the future. And so if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on your journey to being the best investor you can be. Till next time.